Have you ever tried programming using Notepad++? It's so painful not having autocomplete, which was why when things like IntelliSense came out in VS Code and Visual Studio, along with other autocomplete tools, it really revolutionized programming and made programmers so much more productive. And now there's a whole new suite of tools coming out with AI-powered autocomplete, but are they going to be as revolutionary as IntelliSense and other autocomplete tools were? Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now at the beginning, I mentioned that AI autocomplete tools could be the next revolution of autocomplete, and I actually think this is 100% true. I don't think they're going to be quite as profound as the transition from no autocomplete to IntelliSense and other autocomplete, but going from using, you know, the normal VS Code autocomplete to using something like Tab9 or Kite, which are these AI autocomplete tools, drastically changed how quick and performant I was able to write code. And I was honestly incredibly impressed with the code that was generated by these autocomplete tools. Now, in order to get started with this AI autocomplete yourself, you can use pretty much any text editor you want because all of the popular AI autocomplete tools have extensions for those text editors, and you just download the extension or plugin for the one that you want. And in my opinion, I would recommend using Tab9 as your AI autocomplete tool, and they are actually the sponsor of this video. But I'm not just recommending them because they are the sponsor of this video. I've worked with multiple of the different AI autocomplete tools out there. I've had multiple of them reach out to sponsor videos for me, but of them all, Tab9 was the one that I found to be the most versatile and the most accurate with its completions, which really sped up my productivity, while some of the other solutions just weren't as good in my opinion, which is why I'm working with Tab9 on this video, they're sponsoring it, and why I recommend using Tab9 if you're going to go with an AI autocomplete tool. Also, it's important for me to say that there are some cons to these AI autocomplete tools, which I'm going to cover at the end of the video, so it's not all 100% positive, but more often than not, these cons aren't actually a problem for most people. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is if you ever have used or seen these in use, you may be really amazed with some of the suggestions they come up with. It seems like it's almost able to read your mind and write down exactly what you would write down as a suggestion. So it kind of knows what you want to write no matter what. And you probably start thinking like, how in the world does this work? That's at least what happened to me. I was wondering, how do they come up with these great suggestions? And the way that these AI autocomplete tools work is they almost always are querying a large database of code. So for example, GitHub has millions and millions of code repositories and tons and tons of lines of code. And what happens is these tools, they train on some of the best code on these platforms. So they go to public GitHub repositories, good, high quality public GitHub repositories for that matter, and they go through and they read the code and they look at the code and they analyze the code, this AI, and it's learning what all of the different patterns in these codes are, best practices, and so on. And it's then using all of that knowledge that it learned to help you write your code. So it may see that if you write out some JavaScript where you're selecting JavaScript objects using document.querySelector based on data attributes. So for example, you have an element container variable and you're getting that from a element that has the attribute data element container on it. Then let's say that you're going down to the next line and you're creating a new variable called field input. And then it may automatically add the rest of the code for you that says, hey, document.querySelector data field input. It says, is this what you meant? And you're like, well, of course that's what I meant because that's the pattern you're doing in your code. And it's a pattern a lot of other people use in their code as well. So it's going to see that and automatically do that for you. And that's one other thing that's important to know about these AIs is they actually learn from you as well as from these millions and millions of lines of code they learned on. And that's because they're taking all of the code you write and analyzing that as well and trying to figure out what patterns specifically your code falls into. That way, as you use these more and more, they're going to learn off of your coding style and start giving you even more accurate suggestions than when you first downloaded the extension. This is where I really think that these tools shine because unlike your normal VS Code IntelliSense that auto-completes variable names and function names and so on, these tools actually go the next step and they auto-complete full lines or things that aren't even related to any of the rest of your code based on, you know, variable and function names. And instead, they just infer this knowledge from the millions of lines of code that they've studied on. And that's what really makes them so powerful because it can predict things that normal IntelliSense and other autocompletes just can't do. Another important thing to note about these autocomplete tools is that they're very specifically based on the code that they train on. So some autocomplete tools may only train on one single language. It may be a JavaScript only autocomplete tool or a Python only autocomplete tool, and they train on only that one language. So you can only really use the autocomplete with that one particular language. Other autocomplete tools like Tab9, for example, they're going to go through and scan multiple different types of languages so they can be used across many different languages of programming instead of just one or the other. 
I've personally used tab 9 a bunch with JavaScript and really enjoy working with it inside of JavaScript, but you can use it in many other languages as well. Also, some of these tools are going to work with text as well as code. So if you're writing out text as like on an HTML page or maybe on a comment inside of your code, depending on which one of the AI autocomplete tools you use, they may actually offer autocomplete for the text that you're writing based on the code around it or the other things around it. This is something that tab 9 offers that I found pretty useful. It's not something I use all the time because I don't write tons of comments, but it is one thing that can really help speed up your code and make you write more comments, which is a good thing to do if you're writing really complex code. Now we've talked a lot about the pros of these AI autocomplete tools, but there are some cons you need to take into account and they almost always revolve around the fact you're running this process locally on your computer and it's going to use some level of resources. And these resources are almost always gonna be either your RAM, your CPU, or your GPU. When it comes specifically to tab nine, which is the one that I use the most because I enjoy it the most, I notice RAM usage is not really that big of a deal. GPU usage, again, not really a big deal, but there is some CPU usage that you have to take into account. For the most part, it's not going to be an issue. I have a five or six year old computer, and when I'm just coding along using tab nine, I notice no issues. But if I tack onto it recording video, which is an incredibly CPU intensive operation, then I do notice some performance hits with my CPU, but it's so minor it really isn't a big deal. And most people aren't out there recording programming tutorials on a five or six year old computer. So really it's nothing you have to worry about. Also, another reason this really isn't that big of a deal is because pretty much every AI autocomplete tool has the ability for you to run these AI autocompletions in the cloud. So essentially some other computer or server somewhere is running these calculations for you. So it frees up all of that space on your CPU, GPU, and your RAM. The only thing you really have to worry about there is just making sure that you have a quick enough internet speed that it's not going to be drastically slowing you down to do that back and forth communication. But for the most part, it shouldn't really be a big deal. Now, the final con that I wanna talk about is pricing. And that's because unlike IntelliSense, this AI autocomplete is not free, which is a bit unfortunate, but it makes sense. They almost always do have some level of free tier, but that free tier is going to be limited in some way. So if you wanna unlock the full potential of these tools, you're going to have to pay a monthly fee, which is generally somewhere between five, 10, $20. It really depends on the tool that you use. Now this may sound like a lot of money, but the nice thing is that it's going to be saving you time when you're programming, which means you're gonna be able to build projects quicker. And if you're working for a company, then that almost always means that they're willing to pay this fee for you. Because if you tell them, hey, if you pay $20 a month, you're going to save me five hours of work every month, well, they can do the math really easily and say $20 is way less than what we pay you for five hours of work. So I'll gladly pay this for you. So that way you can kind of get this for free by having the company pay for it. But if you need to pay for it yourself, tab nine is really generous for sponsoring this video. And they're giving every single person 50% off for a year. If you use the link down in the description. So if you are interested in using the pro version of tab nine, after trying out the free version, just use the link in the description for 50% off for the full first year. At this point, AI autocomplete tools are already really amazing. And the best part is they're just continuing to get better every single year, which is why I can't wait to see where these tools are five or 10 years from now. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.